Hi, this is Phil Caveney, and I am doing a supplement to another uh, video that I did 16 years ago for, uh, for, for a series which I'd like to continue called Foundations of the Fantastic. This particular video is for Dr. Janice Bogstead's Honors UW-Eau Claire Science Fiction course. And it has to do with H.G. Wells as being one of the foundational writers in creating the genre of science fiction. Most of you are familiar with H.G. Wells because of his uh, novella, which then goes into different iterations uh, called The War of the Worlds. Uh, but he was a very prolific writer, born in 1866, died in 1946. In his first, first novella that made him a success was something called The Time Machine. And that involved being able to travel through time as if it were another dimension. And you're going to see this as you see my video, this being the introduction to it, that we are going to time travel back to myself as I was 16 years ago when the level of technology did not exist for me to do the kind of production that we're doing now. What we did 16 years ago would probably cost $100,000 in production costs then, but now we're doing it on a shoestring. And of course we're going to be looking for funding so we can get a bigger shoestring and do more production. But what I want to say, I, I give a lot of biographical and big bibliographical information on the life and times of H.G. Wells, a, essentially a writer whose career stretched from Victorian England, being born in 1866, to 1946 when he died. And he became an important cultural force within the Western democracies, actually. And what I want to talk about is something that another media theorist said, spoke about. And the, the, the guy's name is Marshall McLuhan. And any of you who are in media studies, of course, will know who I talk, I'm talking about. And if you're not, sadly, you've probably never heard of him. But he is famous, Marshall McLuhan is famous for the phrase, the media, the medium, is the message. And H.G. Wells probably would have been just another Victorian writer who became quite popular but then settled in the, into obscurity had it not been for the American radio producer Orson Welles who took H.G. Wells' War of the World and made it into a radio program in 1938. Now I'm going to pull back a little bit and talk about the cultural work that the science fiction genre does. And I'm going to go to another back to, I'm going to really talk about almost entirely about War of the Worlds from now on. War of the Worlds was written in 1898, shortly after his break, H.G. Wells' breakthrough novella, The Time Machine. And what it did was at a time when the British Empire ruled the world, the sun never set on the British Empire, white imperialism seemed to be dominating everywhere, is he took an alien intelligence, dark and calculating as to be to us humans, like we were mice or bacteria or something, something to get rid of the play from the planet. We, we, we were sort of a, a, a scourge and they were, they were going to take over for real. And so British people who were used to being top dog, as you say, and were confident of their optimism and their power, he extended it one step further. And it was as if the British Navy, which was power, more powerful than all of the other navies in the world, 
was like a bunch of little boats in a bathtub or something like that. And so what he did is he got the British thinking about a future which was not like the present that they had. And that makes him as relevant today as he was a hundred and I guess 125 years ago when War of the Worlds came out. But I'm going to go back now and say that another iteration, a re, kind of rejuvenation of H.G. Well, Wells's work took place in 1938 with the, when he then uh, allowed the brilliant young radio producer Orson Welles to take his story War of the Worlds and make a radio program of it, which appeared on Halloween of 1938. Now I'm going to bring up a little history because you probably won't get this any other place if you're taking this course. October 1938 was 11 months before World War II was to break out when, the, when Nazi Germany in, invaded Poland. And at that time, everybody in England, everybody in America, People were terrified of attack from the air. They were terrified about bombers coming in. They had poison gas technology from the First World War. The whole world was on its edge. And radio was this powerful communications tool. You cannot explain to you in a multimedia world what it was like when the only thing you really had was radios, radio, movies, and television. I want to go a little further into this and say that someone, someone in your families or somewhere in history, you've came upon Franklin Delano Roosevelt during the Depression when America was felt and the Western democracies felt beaten, felt, felt as if they were exhausted, 25% unemployment. It wasn't a good time. But Roosevelt was able to say for national television, uh, national radio, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And people would actually sit around in their living rooms with radios as big as my 30-inch television, and, I, and that's a small one, and listen to the news and listen to what they were, what, the, what it was about. My, my wife's father's father had a great big radio, and they probably all listened to the H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, produced by a 26-year-old Orson Welles. But the thing is, as many of them listened to it, they listened to it not as if it was, it was a neat science fiction program, but as if it was really happening, as if it was a news story and the Martians were really invading. And people were terrified, and some, some, some people actually wanted to enlist for war against the Martians. But this was a particular climate where people, people were on edge, and they knew that the Nazi Germans were, were rising in power, and they knew that they were no longer invulnerable, and, and people just became scared. Now, I'm going to move ahead and say that another iteration appeared of War in the War of the Worlds in 1953. It's a George Pal production, and it's a a uh, it's a movie. It's a it's actually a, a pretty good movie, which takes the irony, and you have to remember the irony of the of the defeat of the Martians is much different than than. Independence Day, for example, where the heroic American takes a starfighter and destroys the king of the aliens or something like that, or the mothership or whatever it is. But in this particular, in, in the H.G. Wells version of War of the Worlds, which is carried into the movie, the, the Martians are defeated by Earth's bacteria. Earth is simply a too toxic place for them to survive for now, and they may be back. There was a 2005 version of War of the Worlds, which my producer saw, which she thought was pretty good. 
and I think there was a return of War of the Worlds that I need to watch. But what, what I want to say is, just think of this, this Victorian writer writing a story 125 years ago, and it has legs right up to the present. And this argues for the power and the relevance of, of science fiction as a way of addressing what we're concerned about. And people are scared now. People are scared since 9-11. And people just will never will have the security that we had, say, after the, after the end of the Cold War. Now, I want to say one more thing. I prep for this by reading the end of War of the Worlds to my wife for a course. And it's a beautifully written piece of literature. And this goes to my argument that Often these, these books are taught to people even in junior high school and they say, well, I've had that. You know, I've had that. But I'm, I'm talking about a book that I read 42 years ago, an author that I started 42 years ago, and I have learned things now about him that I would never have gotten, gotten the first time. So we do have these classics, not classics set by academics, but classics of use classics of discussion. So this is going to segue then into uh, the rest of the video for Dr. Bosted's course and it's been a real pleasure to do this. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope to continue with the series Foundations of the Fantastic.